Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In previous lecture, we have derived expressions for the mechanical force and torque based on the change of field energy dWf and the change of the co-energy dWf dash for the single excited electromechanical energy conversion systems. In this lecture and the coming lecture, we will learn how to use and apply these equations to the linear motion single excited systems and the rotational motion single excited systems to develop force and torque expressions for these systems. It is worth to mention here that these force and torque expressions are valid for linear magnetic systems and nonlinear magnetic systems. However, for analytical derivation purpose, the magnetic systems usually simplified and assumed to be linear magnetic system as we will see in this lecture and the future lectures. Now let's first start with the single excited linear motion systems such as this relay system and try to develop the force using the following two force expressions. It is very clear from these two expressions of the mechanical force that the force can be developed if the field energy Wf or the co-energy Wf dash are known. Basically, if the field energy or the co-energy are known, the force can be developed by taking the derivative of field energy or the derivative of co-energy with respect to the position x. So now we need first to find the field energy Wf and the co-energy Wf dash of the single excited linear motion system before applying these two force expressions. As we learned before, the field energy and the co-energy of the linear motion systems can be derived as follows and they are equal to 1 over 2 i square L of x. As we can see, the field energy and the co-energy are same and equal to 1 over 2 i square L of x because the magnetic system is assumed to be linear magnetic system. In other words, the relationship of 1 over 2 I square L of X is valid only if the magnetic system is linear magnetic system. Linear magnetic system means that the impact of the magnetic core saturation of the magnetic circuit is ignored and therefore the Psi I characteristic is just simple linear slope. Now, if the magnetic core saturation impact is ignored, the inductance of this magnetic circuit will depend on the geometry only. That means, if we already have a designed magnetic circuit, such as the shown, then the only factor that changes the geometry and therefore the inductance is the air gap length or the position X. That is why inductance is represented by L of X. Let's give more details. If we excite this system with certain current IS, while the moving part is fixed at large air gap, then the magnetic circuit with this large air gap will have large reluctance and small inductance and therefore the magnetic field will be low or weak. Now if we excite this system with the same current IS while the moving part is fixed at small air gap, then the magnetic circuit with the small air gap will have a small reluctance and large inductance and therefore the magnetic field will be strong or high. Basically, you can install an inductance meter to monitor the inductance change at different moving part position X. So changing the air gap length X will change the geometry and therefore change inductance of the magnetic circuit. 
Now, since the field energy and co-energy are known and equal to 1 over 2 I square L of X, the force can be developed using any of the following two force expressions. As we can see, both expressions give same result 1 over 2 I square DL of X over DX. This proves that any of these two expressions can be used and applied for developing the mechanical force and it is a matter of user convenience which expression to choose. Note that the mechanical power is equal to the force times the velocity and can be represented as follows. Now let's focus on this important developed force expression Fm equal 1 over 2 I square D L of X over DX. This force expression shows that if the coil of the magnetic system is excited by the current I, the force can be developed only if the inductance changes or varies with respect to the position X. That means if the inductance varies with respect to position X, the rate change of inductance with respect to position X, DL of X over DX will be non-zero value and therefore the force will be non-zero value as well. Basically, when we want to use this force equation, we need to always remember the following two points. The first point is, in linear magnetic system, the inductance depends on the geometry only. In other words, if the magnetic material saturation is ignored, the inductance depends on the geometry only. As mentioned earlier, the inductance is represented by L of X just to show that the inductance depends on the air gap length X. So changing the air gap length X will change the geometry and therefore the inductance of the magnetic circuit. The second point is single excited linear motion system able to develop force only if the inductance changes with respect to the position X. In other words, if the inductance changes with respect to the position X, then the system able to develop force because the derivative of the inductance DL of X over DX will be non-zero value. The question now, how to identify the direction of the force using this expression. Since the current is squared, then the force direction is independent of the current direction. In other words, the force direction is independent whether the current I is positive or negative, or in this direction or the other direction. Therefore, the direction of the force depends on the rate change of the inductance dL over dx only. So the force will increase in the direction where the rate change of inductance increases. That means the force will act or increases in the direction to increase the inductance of the magnetic circuit. Therefore, the force and the moving part will be in this direction because in this direction, the air gap reduces and the reluctance reduces and therefore inductance increases. So now we know that the force will always increases in the direction where the inductance increases. The question now, how to identify the mathematical sign of this torque direction. Is it positive sign or negative sign? Basically, the mathematical sign of this torque direction would depend on the position change orientation dx. In other words, if the inductance increases 
as the position decreases, such as the following position orientation, then the sign of the force will be negative. This curve represents the relationship of the inductance with respect to the position x in this case. Basically, the rate of change of inductance with respect to the position is simply the slope of this curve. Since the slopes are negative, then the force is negative. The negative sign of the force also means that the force acts in the direction to reduce the air gap length or the position x. Now, if the inductance increases as the position x increases, such as the following position orientation, then the sign of the force will be positive. This curve represents the relationship of the inductance with respect to the position x in this case. Basically, the rate of change of inductance with respect to the position is simply the slope of this curve. Since this slope is positive, then the force is positive. The positive sign of the force also means that the force acts in the direction to increase the position x. Let's conclude this lecture at this point and will continue in the next lecture. In the upcoming lecture, we will cover the development of torque expression of the rotational motion single excited system. Let me know if you have any question. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you do not miss any lecture. Thanks for listening. I am Ihsan al-Nabi and it was a pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.